kind of papaya is this? It's probably an exotic papaya. But isn't it so big for exotic papaya? No. no, the red ladies are a little smaller. Actually, this kind of looks like a watermelon papaya. I'm not totally sure. I love watermelon papayas and I know they call them melon papaya. You don't like the watermelon papaya? No. You just want to eat the little koi? Yeah. I love papaya. I love papaya. You want your own plate? Yeah. This is so sweet. I can get you your own plate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every man must leave the garden. Every woman must leave. And every man will be forsaken. And every woman must bleed. Really? But everything will be forgiven. When you get back home, yeah, yeah, everything yeah. that once was broken is now completely old. Me, Elvis. <laughs> Mama, this is really sweet. Go on and try it now. Okay, you can give me a bite. Mm -hmm. So sweet. Mmm. That is such a good one. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Mama! <laughs> How's your computer stuff going? Well, now I'm having garage band issues, so that's fun. I'm just getting work done, but I was talking to the garage band guy after being on hold for so long. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm sorry I'm being so grumpy. He's like, it's okay. Hey, Hannah, do you, ha do you have the game King of Tokyo? Oh. No. Mm. Do you want me to have you guys been playing? Yeah. Well, maybe next time I come to California, I can bring it. Oh, good, yeah. Completely whole, completely whole, completely whole, completely whole, yeah, completely whole, completely whole. So come back home. So come back home. So come back home. Come back home. After having a papaya snack, I did some yoga. A lot of people ask me what exercise I do while pregnant. My favorite forms of exercise while pregnant are walking uphill and pregnancy yoga. Lately I've been using the site Yogaya Plus Manduka for yoga videos. It's the only live and interactive online yoga studio in the world and features loads of classes for live yoga, meditation, fitness, and Pilates whenever and wherever you want. Yogaya Plus Manduka online classes help you become fitter and healthier all while getting it done right in your own home. So with this site, you can choose live classes to where you have the option to turn on your camera to receive personalized guidance and encouragement from the teacher, which is perfect for me during pregnancy to make sure I'm doing proper yoga poses that are safe and healthy for pregnancy. And all of their live classes are recorded, so you can access them anytime you like. Yogaya is super simple to use. I partnered up with Yogaya to get you guys an awesome discount. A monthly plan is $19.99 and a 12-month plan is $9.99 per month. But click the link in the description box of this video to sign up and get a one month free trial. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Move that block or whatever you're using out of the way. So the first one we're going to do is treat. And then to begin. And then finding your balance from there. If you will. Reaching from the bottom. Then push yourself away from the bottom. And then start to extend. And one hand. Holding on each other, boys, if you want to play it, okay? I got it! You got it, nice. Now that I learned the lesson, I cultivate the message, capturing the essence of the present moment in perfection. Well, love is so alive. Jaga my every stride, living in the garden with the children of the most high. I will climb the mountain, and I will sing the song. I will find the silence, and I will sing along. But love will always guide us right back to where we are. We will never God. So come back home 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 I will climb back up the mountain I will climb back up the 
and answer the common questions I've been receiving. First and foremost, the most common question is if we're finding out if our baby is a boy or a girl. And we always like to wait until we give birth to find out because um, I kind of feel like finding out beforehand is like finding out your Christmas present before you get to open it. And I totally get that that's not for everybody to wait, but just for us it feels good that way and we just don't really have a desire to find out beforehand. Mostly because we really don't care if we're having a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter to us either way. With Elvis and Sandy, we waited until the birth to find out as well and it was such a special surprise. And if we have another boy, that would just be so awesome. I know that a lot of people have been saying they're hoping this next baby is a girl, but, but we truly do not care. We'll be so excited either way having three boys would be so fun and crazy and just watching their bond grow up I think that's super special but then a girl would be super fun as well something totally different so that's the main reason for that um, the next thing is exercise a lot of people have been asking me what I do for exercise while pregnant and you kind of saw a little bit earlier in the video but I really enjoy doing yoga when I'm pregnant it feels so good to be gentle in my body normally when I'm not pregnant I love doing the high intensity interval training exercises between 20 to 25 minutes of just really working your butt off breaking a huge sweat and toning up your muscle but when I'm pregnant those exercises like jump squats and lunges they do not feel good when I'm pregnant they don't feel good on my lower back or my body in general um, it feels much better to be more gentle and um, smooth with my body so prenatal yoga really feels good when I'm pregnant but the other exercise that I find super beneficial to be able to um, get out of breath pump that lymphatic system is walking uphill walking uphill feels so good on my body it actually relieves a lot of pressure on my back and it feels good on my body while being able to break a sweat and get out of breath there's a beach down the street from us that has a big hill and it's on sand which makes it even more comfortable for me and i'll just get away from the kids and the family for a little bit for about an hour meet up with a friend and walk uphill on the sand up and down the hill for about an hour and that feels so good on my body so i haven't been working out as much this pregnancy as my last pregnancies which is just my own fault with prioritizing because i have been working a lot sitting on the computer editing videos and such but i do find it um important to keep it a priority as best as you can tips for healthy vegan pregnancies i um i really recommend to focus on getting a lot of that chia, flax, and hemp seeds in your diet for the good balance of omegas. And I really love to add this to my green smoothies, but if you live in a cold climate where green smoothies just don't sound good to you, that's totally fine. You can add hemp seeds and soaked chia seeds to your um, salad dressings and your salads or even just sprinkled on top of your meals with quinoa, whatever, whatever floats your boat. It doesn't have to be in a smoothie. That's just how I enjoy them. And getting lots of greens in general is super, super good for you and your growing baby. Lots of minerals and iron, um, good for teeth health, good for just growing your baby in general. And if you're having a hard time stomaching greens on, in salads, that's totally normal and okay. Certain phases of pregnancy, and, and for some women all throughout pregnancy, having salads is just not very tasty. And a lot of women have food aversions to them, myself included, for certain parts of my pregnancy. And then sometimes I'm really craving a salad. It just I just kind of go with the flow with it. If you're not enjoying salads and you're not having smoothies as well, where for me I get a bulk of my greens through my smoothies where I add a huge bunch of kale from our garden into my smoothies. But if you're not getting either of those things, try steaming some kale or you can just like sneak in bunches of dark leafy greens like spinach and kale and collard greens into your cooked meals with sweet potatoes or squashes and just mix it all in there so that you can still get to chew on a lot of greens. And the number one most important thing is to eat enough calories. Fuel your body with 
high calorie whole plant foods. This will help satisfy you to feel your best, help for your growing baby, and help you to not crave unhealthy food. So it's really good to just be on top of it and prioritize to eat enough calories when you're pregnant. And for some women, especially like towards the end, there's not very much room in your belly to eat large meals, but that's okay. Just eat smaller portions more often and snack throughout the day. And high calorie whole plant foods that will fill you up are quinoa, sweet potatoes, squashes, beans, lentils. And these are foods grown all around the world. Regular russet potatoes, you can bake golden potatoes, pop them in the oven, slice them up as, as like potato fries, sprinkle some garlic powder and black pepper on them. And that's a really great way to go. Dip it in some guacamole. And and if you enjoy eating a lot of fruit like I do, um, I personally really love to have a lot of papaya and uh, fresh orange juice and but yeah, certain even in my first trimester though, I was having like aversions to certain fruit and that's okay, just go with the flow. But when it comes to calories, it's good to prioritize it and just keep reminding yourself to eat enough calories. Another thing people have been asking me a lot is if Sandy is still breastfeeding and he is still breastfeeding, just not very much anymore. When I first got pregnant, he was still breastfeeding at a normal amount that he was before I was pregnant, which was probably about two or three times a day. Not very long though, mainly about 10 minutes in the morning and just one or two minutes twice later in the day. But once I got into the second trimester, he started not wanting milk as much. It's pretty common from what I've read for your milk to change while you're pregnant and so that it tastes different to your baby. It's pretty common for your baby or toddler to not be as interested in it anymore. So I just kind of went with the flow and now that I'm in the third trimester now, he's back at wanting it. The last the last few weeks to a month, he's been wanting milk again. Um, so he is having breast milk in the morning, but that's pretty much the only time he's having breast milk. And I enjoy breastfeeding him still, so it's all good. But when I was in the first trimester, I was definitely very tired and um, my nipples were tender and um, sensitive. So if I wasn't feeling it or if I really feel like I needed my space, I would definitely tell him like, mommy cannot give you milk right now and I would give him try to give him something else or give him to Andrew to take him somewhere else so that he'd be okay so yeah if you're like breastfeeding and you're pregnant and you're struggling with it you can always just have boundaries and you know you don't have to feel bad about having boundaries because you want to take care of yourself especially when you're more tired in the first trimester and for those of you who aren't sure this is this will be my third home birth I'm having the same midwife that I did for my last my last birth with Sandy um, she's a CPM and with every birth so far we've had two midwives as well, an assisting midwife there. And all three of my births are low risk healthy pregnancies and I feel my safest at home but wherever you feel safest is where you should give birth and doing your research so that you can understand both sides to it is really important. So I hope this helps. I'm just going to show you the rest of my day and how I go about preparing for birth all the while taking care of myself so that I'm feeling my best and helping my body to best grow a healthy baby and have a really healthy emotional mindset as well which is so important. I will come back to the garden, the garden, the garden, the garden, yes. I will come back home.